Welcome to Take 10. We are talking about the crafted stories of man's opinion. How a good story goes far and it's wonderful, but how a bad story will just go tearing everything up you have worked for. Don't distress. I'm teaching you about it. And over the next few sessions, you're going to learn how to inoculate yourself against being destroyed every time a friend takes a knife to you. David was in that way, and we talked about it last time, and he even said he was restless and distraught in his complaint. And he said, I must moan. Now, I'm reading to you from the Lamsa translation, but it says, and I am distracted at the noise of my enemy. Who is his enemy? At that point, he may not have known who the enemy was. He did not know how it was coming, what was being said. Oh, how he wished he could tell his side of the story. But most of the time, you can't. If you do, it just muddles up the thing. I remember telling a friend one time, let's straighten it out. Let's go to the source. Let's work it out. And he said to me, he said, you know, if a kitten takes a ball of yarn and rolls it out across the floor, you'll spend a long lifetime trying to put the yarn back on the roll. It's better sometimes just to ignore the mess and move forward. Well, that's partially true, but if you bury it and you don't handle it correctly, you are not inoculated against the future things because the crafted stories are pulled from threads of truth to destroy you as an individual. Here's what David said. David said in, in, in Psalms 55, uh, if you didn't catch the last take 10, you probably need to go back to it. Psalms 55, he said, because of the oppression and the threats of the wicked. And I, I think uh, when, when I began to hear this uh, some 40-something years ago, it was a courage to me. And I've returned to Psalms 55 many times to, to pull, myself, pull myself back up or to pull myself, to bring myself back into a place to where I could go again. Uh, but I really didn't understand it until recently. He said, for they would cast trouble upon me, and in wrath they, they persecute me. Now he goes personal. And he says, my heart is grievously pained within me. One of the personal horrors of my life is to have my family touched, or, or to have my wife touched, or my daughter, or those that I love, or staff members. David said, my heart is grievously pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. I remember multiple times in, in, in my ministry life when I would hear that a pastor has had a bad way, or I've heard bad stories, or maybe the national news or the national press worked on uh, their character, and, and, and I knew they didn't have all the story, and your heart just is grievously pained because of the crafted stories. They tend to find all the enemies to talk to, all the people that want to distract and no one to stand up and say they were good people. They made a mistake or maybe they didn't make a mistake. Maybe it was just not the whole story told yet. Or maybe time hasn't uh, been kind to them or time and temperature hasn't brought about a harvest where things can be straightened out and brought about. I know that's the case in my own personal life. It takes a while sometimes for trouble to be healed and brought to pass a victory. But in God, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So it's all, all sin, all failure, all bad stuff, all good stuff. It all works together. David said that he got to the place where fear, in chapter 55, the 55th Psalm, fear and trembling have come upon me. Horror and fright have overwhelmed me. Is this the same guy that slew Goliath, that took a lion and a bear with his own hands or a, his own slingshot and, and killed him? And now he's saying, and I say, can you believe this? He says, and I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. Why? Because I would fly away and be at rest. I would get out of here. I would be gone. Now, if you gave me a dollar for every time I thought I could just fly away and it would all be over with, I'd be a very rich man and you would be my friend and we would go to dinner. And if I had a dollar for every time I've heard one of my friends or one of those of you that I pastor as ministers or those that I'm a president of the ICCI that I've listened to the struggles of your nonprofit, I would be a multi-gazillionaire. There would not be enough money in the world because this is how it works. Trouble is crafted against you. Things happen. 
The truth is not told. Scattered stories are weaved into them, the crafted stories of man's opinion, and boy, it comes on you. Then you think God's not listening. Then you think your life is over. And then you start saying, wow, I just want to get out of here. I would fly away and be at rest. And then he says these words. He's, he's, he's having it tough. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness. And then he uses a word that was very common to them. He says, Selah, which means pause, calmly think of that. <laughs> yeah, all the trouble you're in, all the stories. If I could just get away to the Sudan, you know, and hide under some uh, juniper tree, I'll be all right. Well, this doesn't work. Thoughts, no, no barriers. Thoughts, no, no containment. You can be in the best place, having recreated into the joyous occasions of the future. You can be so powerful, and all of a sudden, one thought or one friend would say to you, remember when? Or maybe someone would be, felt it was their duty to bring up some hurt or thing from the past to help someone not be hurt by you or your programs again. Most likely, it's just jealousy. Most likely, it's just they would rather be where you are and they can't stand to see the blessings that are on you. But David said, I, he said, I would hasten to accept. This is the guy who, who had killed his thousands, tens of thousands. It was greater than the king Saul. He said, I would hasten to escape and I would find shelter from the stormy wind and tempest. Obviously, he was not talking about a battle he was familiar with. Then he, out of bitterness, he says, destroy their schemes. O oh Lord, confuse their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about its walls. Iniquity and mischief are in its midst. Violence and ruin are within it. Fraud and guile do not depart from its streets and marketplaces, for it is not. Oh, wait, let's just stop a minute and think about it. He just keeps hammering. What is he speaking from? Not love. Not the ability to be uh, uh, reasoned against and worked against and, and structured against and the ability to forgive. The greatest scripture in the Bible for me is where he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do when they were nailing him to the cross, when they were sticking him in the side, when his water and blood was pouring forth. The Lord Jesus Christ said, forgive them. For they know, because if they knew what they were doing to the Lord of glory, they would not have done it. They felt righteous in what they were doing. They felt religious. They felt like they were on the right side. And in this day of the clamoring of men against men, and, and there's not anything sacred anymore. There's not anything that works by. I'm calling you to a place to where you discuss bitterness in your own soul. Something that has come there. And on the very next take 10, we're going to talk about what is it that causes this bitterness? And why would he start saying, I rebuke them and I bind them and I, and I, and I, and I pray against them and day and night they're eating me up and, and all of this stuff. He starts praying hate to God. Now, I understand that we battle not flesh and blood and sometimes you have to battle the enemy, but we do not hate people. The haters are on the wrong side. Violence and ruin are within that. Fraud and guile do not depart from its streets and marketplaces. He was right in what he was saying. But until he began to learn who it was that was hammering him, he was not able to be free. Let me pray for you. Father God, on this session of Take 10, I don't know if they're sitting by the side of a road in a busy airport or late at night, uh, uh, watching uh, from all the different avenues that I come to them on. Father God, I ask you right now that you will give them peace with the past. Peace where people have crafted stories against them and give them an honor in their spirit and let them begin to pray for those that despitefully use them and rise from the ashes to know that you are God and you are the friend that sticketh closer than a brother and would never hurt, only build up and bring strength 
to this person. Father God, I pray for my brother and my sister in Jesus' name. I loose blessing on them today. Let a phone call come. Let an email come. Let an Instagram come that tells them how great you are and how you love them. I cause their stock to rise today in the heavens. I bless you. Thank you for coming to Take 10 today. God bless you.